last two A little drunk but I'm alright Cause I've been hanging with you And it feels like love Hello one and all, welcome to Scene Through Glass And welcome to Dallas, Texas Well just outside Dallas, Texas I feel like I should yee-haw and change my cap for a cowboy hat But I'm, I'm unprepared so you're just gonna have to bear with me Right now, I'm off to meet up with Bob Norwood, well Bob Norwood Ferrari or Norwood Ferrari, I'm not entirely sure how they actually phrase them or call themselves as a business, but I'm off to meet up with Bob because he's a very interesting guy. I'm not really sure how this video is going to pan out because from what I've learned or what I've heard is that Bob is a guy full of stories and these are stories that I'm going to try and extract in today's video. He's one of the very few people around the world that have been hot rodding or modifying and rebuilding Ferraris kind of since day one, since the, I think, early 70s, but as I say, we're about to find out. So we'll have to visit his relatively small workshop just outside Dallas. I don't know if they're going to have any cars up and running there, but they're definitely going to have bits lurking around, and as I say, we're going to be hearing a lot from Bob and his life around Ferraris. So what's the uh, what's the story? Because from the outside, it looks relatively stock. <laughs> it is, you know. It, it, in another world, another life, we would have never taken this thing apart because it's so, so valuable. It's like one of six ever made. But uh, the, a friend of mine, Dr. Gordon, owns this car. He's got a pretty good Ferrari collection. And in 1991, we decided to put a V8 turbo motor in it. <laughs> <laughs> As you do, you just woke up one morning and went, oh, let's... Well, you know, I mean, these things have that little kind of very anemic six-cylinder V6 thing in it. And, uh, they're not, he's, he's had some of my turbo cars. He had a turbo boxer I built for him. And, uh, you know, he, he wanted a powerful car. So we, we put a two-valve uh, 308 motor in it. And it was a tough deal because the old two-valve motors, you'll see I've got some of them inside, they've got a very wide cylinder head. And over the years, I started turboing cars in the, in the 80s, but this, the, what we didn't like about this car was it didn't really come on to about 4,500 RPM and then it made a big move. Okay. And this turbo leg. The, as we learned over the years, I run at Bonneville with the three, this four-valve 308 motor. I got to where I really loved the thing, and it makes big power. And so uh, I was laying in the hospital in February. I had back surgery, major back surgery, 18 plates in there, and fused uh, eight levels. So oh, I, my God. It looks like a railroad track. Yeah, I was going to say, back. yeah, you're more terminated now. I'm laying in the hospital, than I'm thinking, you know, we ought to put a late 308, late model turbo motor in this thing. We've just got to run. I've only driven it like three times. Oh wow! Okay. But it pulls like mad. It looks like it's, it almost feels like it's trying to carry the left front wheel. Okay. It's it's it crazy sounds power. Mad. It's crazy mad power. Now I'm gonna have to. The, what I've got to do next is I'm gonna have to change the shock absorbers because what it does, it kind of goes down in the right rear and up in the left front. And it's hauling ass, you know, kind of all cockeyed. Sure. But it makes a, it's badass. Yeah. I'll give you a ride if you want. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, uh, it's probably got 600 horsepower. Like the, the, we didn't do much to the interior. This is what they call a chairs and flares car. I was going to say, which is an, another version that you wouldn't really want to touch because yeah, it's an even more valuable right. version. It's got the you can see it's got the, the Daytona style, what they call chairs seats in it. Uh, pretty stock inside and everything. We didn't want to mess up with the outside. It's got late 308 wheels on it. Other, we took the Dino wheels off, put 308 wheels and tires off. The thing, even with this crazy motor in it, seems to hook up pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got, the, you know, it's got the engine all over the, over the, the over the tires and everything. It's tight, but yeah. if you think that thing is tight, you should have seen it with the two valve motor. In it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So what we did is we did, we built this car in '91. It's pretty cool. He drove it for a few years, put 7,000 miles on it. And we just updated it, so now it's a 2020 view. Wow. 
So it's yeah. got uh, it's got uh, water to air intercoolers. That's, that's the tank is right here. The water tanks in the fender, right there, and that that has that runs water through the intercooler. And so before it was intercooled, it was just it was just with, without a cooler on. It. So we decided we wanted to build a cooler in it, and it didn't have any trunk space before at all. So now it's got a little bit. You can throw something in there. And then this is the radiator tank and the waste the uh, waste gates here, blow off valves here, and uh, air, the air cleaners over here under this rear fender. So when you put the lid down, it's just like a it's a it's a sleeper at that point. You would never see it coming. Yeah, it's not loud at all either. Really? In fact, yes. A few days ago, we just took the mufflers off of it and gutted them because it was so quiet. It just there was nothing going on. Was, you lack the emotion. And, and turbos don't like back pressure anyway, so they don't like my pressure. Yeah. This is a 1400 horse Testarossa flat motor. 1400 horsepower Testarossa 1400, engine. 60 pounds of boost, 1400 horsepower. And it's got a giant, uh, giant, this isn't a turbo, it's a blower. Okay. And the way this thing works is there's a shaft down here that goes back to the back. Come around the other side of the shaft. Yeah, yeah. The, this this is the, this is making the turbo the board go right here, okay. So this is the this is the flywheel for it, the clutch. So the clutch is inside the flywheel, right? That's the clutch, and this is a big belt that drives the board. Wow! So so belt goes around this and this to drive the board. These are water to air intercoolers. <laughs> this thing is amazing. It's, it's a crazy motor. It's real flat. But it must sound about. It must be one of the best sounding drags. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to show you a picture. Yeah, please. That's I don't have the car here. It's in the body shop. But I'll okay. show you a picture of the car. Uh, so, but where did your Ferrari story start from? You just started buying them as a, or like I I started in 1967. I bought a 330. Okay. Plus two from just, myself. Just as a customer. Just. just okay. Yeah, you know, I was driving funny cars then. And sure. And I just decided, hey, oh, these are good looking cars. And I, I immediately, I immediately put a Ford engine in it. Immediately put a Ford engine in it? Oh, wow. So this is the, this is the, the record car, is this it? A, no, this is a car that has that flat motor in it. Okay. So you see the, see the six exhaust ports? It's got six oh, zoomies yeah. on it right there. Wow. And that motor is so flat, see, it fits under the hood. It's a killer car. That's unbelievable. And there's the, I took this thing when I got it finished up, I took it to SEMA. Well, we've got to go back for a second because you mentioned your first car was the 330, but you put a My first Ferrari. Ford engine. I put a 400 small block Ford and an automatic in it. I got it all done and I had Bobby Smith do the interior on it. This is like 78. 78, okay. maybe. Okay. And so I got it all done. I drove it to Seattle and back to check it out. My sister was in Seattle, so I drove it up there. And I had it for a while and of course I got tired of it. And Sure, time to By move time on. I'm starting to get crazy and really. And what happened with that car is I started to see the mystique and the magic of a Ferrari. When I took the thing apart, I was going, these things are pretty cool. Okay. And then what happened is I was driving funny cars. I had a, a P51 airplane that I was flying. Incredible. And I decided that I was going to end up getting killed, neither one of them. <laughs> and so I kind of stopped. I just stopped. And uh, some people were asking, I was living in north of here, about 20, 30 miles, Denton, Texas. And they were, the people would come say, well, who works on your Ferrari for you? I work I do, yeah. So a couple of wealthy, uh, four wealthy guys in Dallas moved me to Highland Park. And they took four big car collections and built a shop in the back. And there's four car collections. And I took care of all the car collections. What happened is these guys got me in there and got to work and I got building Cobras and then I started building TR-59s which are the car kind of before this. Sure. I built four of those. I also twin turbo an F-50 for him. No. Yep, only one ever done. I'm oh sure. my god that must be insane. And then I did a 328 for him. The first okay. car I did was a 328. 1200 horsepower. A real 1200 horsepower. Insane. I mean those things are stupid fast. Mm -hmm. Well this there is, you go. This is 1200 horsepower in 19... 96, 7, and 8. I mean, that was giant. Oh, insane. Today, Absolutely you insane. got you got cars coming out with a thousand horsepower that you can buy from the factory. Yeah, yeah, it seems to be a race at every single yeah. Geneva Motor Show who can have the most horsepower. Exactly. Yeah. Incredible. Thank you so much. What a what an amazing tour. <laughs> it's beefy. It's beefy. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> now we have been warned a few times by Bob to not crash this car. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I we're going to be. I was going to say that we have uh, some tuning left to do on it, so it's not a hundred percent. Okay, but this is one of the sort of near finished cars you yeah, have because yeah. most of the cars we've been looking at today. Yeah. Uh, have some slight drivability tuning to do. Okay. But it's going to give us, a, I guess, a glimpse as to the kind of stuff you guys do because to achieve the 500 odd horsepower in this thing, what have you actually done to it? Uh, forged internals, tile turbocharger, intercooler, 1000 cc injectors, uh, 380 liter fuel pump, uh, all of it set up for E85, although we're just running 93 right now. Okay. Uh, we made it so we could possibly push it past 600 horsepower. We want to have the most powerful Dino on the planet. Unbelievable. That's not right in a Dino. <laughs> oh, oh my God, the pull on it. And I, I imagine we're barely scratching the surface, right? Here's a turbo gauge. <laughs> oh, this is a totally different experience. Wow. Uh, it is an older gentleman that does drive this. Okay. But he does drive it. If you notice the paint isn't perfect, it's because he doesn't need it to be. He uh, likes driving his car for what it is. Uh, this is not a show car. This is one of the ones that like the guy who uh, beats his F40 or his F50 on YouTube. Sure. And you think, as far as you've worked out from looking at all the numbers and the history, that this is an, a totally original chairs and flares from back in the day. As far as I've been able to find out. Wow. Everything so far seems... Hey, we... we, we... <laughs> you want me to edit that bit out, don't you? <laughs> You're like, just cut that scene. We've all been there. We've all been there. Well, that was ridiculous. <laughs> I don't think I was ever expecting to get into a turbocharged Dino. I mean, the thing almost doesn't feel right. It's sort of kind of amazing, but also just like, what is going on? Let's wave goodbye to the guys and get out of here. But yeah, I mean, the thing was hot. It was manic. It was kind of like, ooh, curling up on itself. Uh, as they said, they've still got a bit of work to do. Most of the cars that you would have seen today were still getting work done to them. So none of them were really the sort of the finished deal if that makes any sense um, but still awesome to walk around and check out and what an insanely fascinating guy Bob is like I just everything that came out of his mouth every story I just was like oh oh insane and going back to my whole thing of people aren't really modifying or hot rodding Ferraris well clearly they are I hope you've enjoyed it give it a thumbs up if you have and make sure to subscribe for plenty more videos to come Too. A little drunk when I'm alright Cause I've been hanging with